I'm Scott Al Miller. This is my vlog of daily life living in Latin America. Today we're starting a video in the beautiful coastal city of Mazatlan, Sinaloa, Mexico. So I did a little bit yesterday talking about uh, the city, but not really giving a tour of it. Today we're going to attempt a tour. I'm starting here in the park right by where we're staying. I'm going to turn around a little bit. I'm in the gazebo. This park is absolutely gorgeous. We're actually going to start the video from here, but I'm going to turn the camera around as we walk. So I just want to show this. Oh, and the audio, suddenly I have the echo. <laughs> and uh, this is where we've been staying for a few days as we explore Mazatlan. We're going to be doing a bit of Mexico over the coming weeks. And uh, this is just fantastic. I'm loving Mazatlan. It is so beautiful. I'm going to take you out to the coast so you can actually see what the waterfront looks like. But the old town here might be the piece de resistance. Both are pretty incredible, though. So we're going to start here in the east side of the old town and head out to the water. So without further ado, let's hit that bump and get on this walk. Okay, so we're starting in Machado Park or Parque de la Machado here in the center of the old town. This is where we're staying. Our hotel is right here behind me. You can kind of see it, right? He says, and uh, this is like the center of activity here in the old town. So if you're coming here uh, so right now, it's pretty early in the morning. You can hear the birds like crazy. It's beautiful. It's so this is a great thing about Mexican life here in Mazatlan is that during the day it is so quiet and peaceful. You can come to the park. You can see there's a few people out just enjoying coffee or having a morning sit. And I'll show this restaurant. This is Gaia behind me. This place is gorgeous. But in the evening, they fill the street with tables. This becomes hundreds and hundreds of seats. This park becomes all shops. Every restaurant on this side fills up. You cannot get a table anywhere here. It is totally packed and uh, live music it's so loud and lively and goes till very late at night but during the day it is so peaceful you get kind of this best of both worlds you can sit down and have a quiet breakfast and a quiet coffee uh and it's it's so different than nicaragua where there's like a certain amount of <laughs> music and and noise and activity just all the time here it's much more uh, uh more, much more of a dichotomy so we're going to start here at the park i'm in the southwest corner of the park i'm going to turn the camera around and we're just going to start exploring these streets because this city is absolutely beautiful and i got to show it to you while we have a chance here in the old town and out to the malecon we can't show the whole thing this is a big city of over half a million people i think it's actually closer to three quarters now it is big it's got high rises it's got the old town it's got like traditional mexican city like it's got a lot of stuff. I would never have guessed that Mazatlan had as much as it does. And, and this, if you're looking for a place where you can spend some, some real time in Mexico, I think you would have no problem spending quite a bit of time. Obviously, a lot of people move here and decide to spend lots of time. But beyond living, actually, like as a vacation, you can spend a bit of time in Mazatlan and have a lot to do beyond just the bars and the food and shopping. There's a lot to see, a lot of beautiful spots, a lot of different kind of activities and, and opportunities here. So as in any large city, but you just don't tend to realize how large of a city it actually is. So let's turn the camera around and get walking. All right, there is the park that we just came from. There's Gaia. <laughs> and uh, we are heading west. So we're going to do our best to show you what the old town is like when it's quiet. When it's And one thing you can see, okay, let me just look up. You can see the lights here. So at night, uh, so first of all, all along the sidewalks in the old town, we've got these these lights. So they light up the buildings. It is so beautiful. And then they have these string lights over the streets and it creates just the softest, most even beautiful light. It's gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. So it's, it's so neat. And uh, I don't know if you can see it very well in the video, partially because of all the trees. But if we look up, you can see we've got loads and loads of places have rooftop seating or rooftop clubs going on. Now, of course, this is a tourist town. There's no getting around it. Mazatlan is all about tourism, all about the beach and its old town. So you're gonna have all kinds of businesses that cater to, to tourism. And so it's nice from certain aspects that you have endless restaurants and shops and cafes and bistros you can see everywhere we look there are bakeries and places to sit and eat there's people in all these places everything is quite lively people are out 
eating. Got some beautiful houses here on the left. But of course, in order to have that happen, it is a tourist center. So the town is full of tourists. And I don't think we're here on a particularly busy, maybe, maybe it's a little bit busy uh, week, but it's not, it's not super busy. And even so, uh, with the way that it is right now, it is so many people, so completely packed uh, that going out restaurants at night are totally full. Um, you know, during the day, like now, okay, we got to show this as it comes by. These little golf carts, these are like a famous thing here in Mazatlan. And uh, they're called the Pulmonia, which comes from and we don't really use this in English, even though it's an English word, is a Pullman, because uh, it's a name of a type of train car. And in some languages, in some regions, uh, the Pullman train cars, which are the ones you would sit in, they're the passenger cars, became a term for passenger vehicles. And these little tiny golf cartish things uh, got that name from there and are the Pulmonia. And they're they're kind of a tourist attraction now. There are loads of them. We'll see them as we're walking. They're they're seriously all over uh and locals apparently don't use them they're just for the tourists but they're kind of cool and fun so not necessarily something to be avoided but be aware that it is a tourist trap kind of thing Ooh, this place is old and decayed in a really romantic way like check that out that is really cool one of these so the downside, or depending on who you are, could be an upside to Mazatlan, is that it is completely full of gringos. And of course, I'm a gringo saying this, but <laughs> adding to the problem. Uh, but it, like living in Nicaragua, we talk about like San Juan del Sur and Granada and all the gringos that are there, all the tourists that are there, and how it impacts everything. This is Venus Street, part of the old town. We're not going to walk down there, just showing it a little bit gets really cute down there. You can see the lights. Power box on the street, unfortunately. And uh, that's the Best Western, the tower in front of us. I don't know if you can read it. Still have the lights overhead. All of this at night. So beautiful. So in Nicaragua, when we talk about how many tourists there are, how many, like the, the restaurants are full of gringos, it's, it's never 100%. It's always, you know, Oh, and this place on the left, so cute with the tile. We saw this a couple times yesterday as we were walking around. And you, 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 you will end up in restaurants, you'll end up in places where it's full of tourists and you, you notice it and you're like, wow, this is really, what is this? Uh, but when you're in Mazatlan, uh, we went out to a restaurant last night, for example, it was 100% gringos when we first got there and it was full. And the owner is American. Uh, some of the workers are American. The entire staff was American. It was like, oh, not, not the, the entire, um, all, all the, the people eating, all the guests, all American, all of them. And so it's a very different experience. Now, one Mexican family did come in towards the end before we left, but that was it. Like that would, I've never seen that happen in Nicaragua anywhere, especially in a full restaurant especially in a busy place, even San Juan del Sur, even on a tourist weekend. Maybe if you go to like one of the specific parties for foreigners, like at Pachamama, and it's a hostile backpacker party. Of course, a backpacker party is going to be pretty much all tourists. That's different. But we're talking a restaurant in the old town. It should be where loads of Mexican families live. This is the children's park. This is a beautiful little spot in the sea. We're really close to the Malecon. Oh, and the street is cut off for some reason. We're going to find out what's going on. This cute hotel here. Really close. There's police up here with a light barricade. Hmm. And uh, so it's very different. The number and, and the, the park that I showed you. Yes, there are some locals who come out to it at night, uh, but the number of tourists, the number of uh, North American tourists that are here are numbers that I've never really seen anywhere in the world before. Uh, so that's, I mean, and, and if you're in Cancun, I would expect it far more, uh, but that it's like that here in Mazatlan is not completely unexpected, but it is pretty dramatic and something that I think especially my viewers are interested in because when so many of us 
are looking at places to live, to retire, to relocate, to spend extensive amounts of time. And often we're looking for something to get away from all of the things we're used to. Not always though. Sometimes that's what you're looking for. This is kind of like an enclave within a giant city in a way I've never seen before. So this is the Pacific Ocean. This is the Malecon. And this is what makes Mazatlan so famous. Now this is the old town. This is the Malecon. This is the famous part of the city. But there's actually the new Gold Coast to the north is where all the big stuff is going on. We're going to show you that too in the future. But we're starting here so you can really see what what Mazatlan is all about. And look just how beautiful. Okay, maybe not this one corner. But other than that, how beautiful, and I hate doing these comparisons, but how Mediterranean and European this all is here in Mazatlan. This is really cool. We were so stunned. Hopefully the wind is not too bad, but we're on a beach. You can only, can only do so much. Uh, oh, there's doggies running around down there. Lots of dogs. That's something that's very encouraging here. Lots and lots of pets all over the place. And that sunlight hitting, hitting the mountainside. Oh, beautiful. It is so beautiful here. We were just shocked by how much this part of Mexico reminds us of so many places in Europe where we have lived, where living in Central America, we rarely get a, this is so much like Europe kind of feeling. So that's, that's something that's very different. And we know that about Mexico, just still coming out to the coast, like it looks like if you, if you told me we were in Greece and I didn't see the signs in Spanish, I'd be like, oh, I'm not, I don't know, this kind of town looks a little bit different, but it would not, you could trick me, right? That's, that's interesting. Whereas if you're in Nicaragua, you're in Honduras, you're in El Salvador, you're never going to have that kind of experience. Uh, it's, it's much more of a Central American, uh, culture. There's so many dogs playing on the beach. All right, we're going to head up that way and uh, continue from up there and do a walk along the Malecon. That is my plan so you can really see what this is like. All right, this is our starting point. I don't want to go all the way down there and walk up as it is. I've uh, done quite a bit of climbing to get ready to do this video for you guys, but I want to show just how beautiful, beautiful this is. We're at the southern point, more or less, that's the southern point, of El Centro. There's a causeway here, a couple actually, uh, and it goes out to this gorgeous island out there at the south of town. And you can see maybe we've got a uh, container ship floating out at sea. And uh, this is just, this is amazing. Um, I think this might actually, from looking at a map, it looks like a petroleum storage facility, but it doesn't look like that from here. It looks more like a military compound or prison or something that is definitely surrounded by rocks. Look at, look at that. I hope you can see this uh, on the GoPro. It is definitely visible from up here, but if you're down on the tourist area taking the causeway, that is a wall of stone separating whatever that is from everything else. So my guess is that's a military compound, uh, but it has a prison look to it. So very hard to say, but that is quite isolated. But you can see the road going up that island down there. And you can see another island out there as well, just poking on behind the cliff. But I want to show this cliff here. So this is the observatory. That is the uh, cable car that takes you up to the observatory, which I'm not going to go up to. I don't feel like paying and I don't know what the options are. I don't know if it's open like to the public, it's like a public park that's free, or if it's, uh, but they, there's some advertising for that at the airport. But it looks really cool. I'm sure the views from up there are spectacular. But we're gonna show some from down here. There's so many miradors all over this walkway. Just everything here is so beautiful. The rocks catching the light out at, the sea, out at sea, these great statues and uh, observatories and miradors all over the place. And then if we look down this way, you can see the, the high rises on the Gold Coast on the north part of the city, way out there. It almost looks like a Panama, like a mini Panama City out there. And then we're gonna walk. So the old town 
lies mostly straight ahead of us, kind of behind all this. So we're gonna take this road, Centennial, and we're gonna walk towards the old town so you can see what this is like all along the coast here in Mazatlan. And then later, we're gonna be up north of the Gold Coast. So that's coming up, not today, but soon. We're gonna see some cool stuff up there. Not a lot of traffic out here. Now again, it is pretty early in the morning, so lots of people sleep here because it's a lot of party all night kind of stuff going on. But, but pretty pleasant out here. I apologize for all the wind, just no way to get around how windy it is when you're out on the ocean. So we're gonna do our best to reduce that in post, but I know a lot of this is gonna cut out because it's just so much wind. But we are on the GoPro, it does tend to do a pretty decent job with the wind compared to most, and we got the dead cat on as we walk, so hoping for the best. Obviously every house along here, absolutely fantastic. What great locations all of this is. You can see right there, this is where we were. Look at that awesome gray water. That is the perfect color for a cold, rocky coast. There's some sandy beaches here, but also lots of gorgeous rocky coasts. We don't get rocks like this in Nicaragua. We have a lot of rocks out in the ocean, but not like this. This is much more what I prefer from a coastline. It's windy enough, I'm almost losing my hat out here. I wish this was more of a exploration trip. I'm actually out here for a wedding, so I'm using the time as best as I can, uh, especially because we're out a little bit early. I wanted to get, this is a garden adopted by the observatory, and uh, we came out a little bit early so I could do some, some filming of, of areas that we're not going to be in for the wedding, uh, but we're going to be here for more than a week so there's so much opportunity to get great stuff, but because it's for a wedding, look at this cute little little spot you can go down to. Uh, I didn't want to, and, and couldn't, because we had so much logistics going on with moving the kids around and, and being in, in Florida and different parts of Mexico is just way too much travel. I couldn't bring a lot of filming gear, so I'm out here with only my phone, this one GoPro, this is the GoPro 11 that I brought out here with me. This place is really cool. We'll see more of it as we go around the corner here. And, uh, and I did bring the new Sony ZV-1 and it's getting some really cool shots of things. But when I'm out for a walk, I can only do so much. I wish I had some additional cameras. I wish I had the 360 with me. That'd be fantastic. I wish I had the Fuji with me. We would do some really cool stuff, but this is definitely not our only time coming to Mazatlan. This is just so beautiful. There's where we just walked down. But so for this trip, I'm very limited on camera supplies. Just is how it is. And then we're gonna be walking up where those people are over there. This circle with this cool pine tree was inaugurated in 1910, 114 years ago. This is not a new town by any stretch. Mazatlan is very, very old. This is an old colonial town. It'll be celebrating 500 years here in a few decades, which is really cool. And early on in its history, had a really large German settlement here. So even from a historic perspective, oh, that is some cool architecture right there. Hope you can see that 
that 45 degree, not quite 30 degree angle, build a like second floor, third floor coming off that building. Cool design, cool wall there for airflow. Some modern buildings here. So even historically going way back, the European and gringo influence in Mazatlan has been incredibly strong. So in some ways, it's authentically a tourist city or a colonial or a foreigner city. So, I mean, you can, you can give it some props for that. It's not like a Mexican city that was always one way and then the tour showed up and it completely changed it. It has some precedence for always being that way. So, I mean, it's something. And obviously as you get out from the center, get away from the coast, you will start to find a lot fewer tourists. It's really, oh, here's one of those tourist mobiles. It is a big city. So there are hundreds of thousands of Mexicans who actually do live here. Of course, it's just this part of the city is so, so touristy. And so because of how big it is, when you hit a tourist zone, of course, it pretty much filters everyone out who isn't a tourist because it gets pricey and densely populated. Got a little bit of a climb going on here. We're gonna have some good views here in a second. Here's a quick thing I'm gonna point out from the sign here. First of all, that this was suspended. Apparently, whoever was building this got in trouble or didn't have the right permissions. So while it looks beautiful in the picture, it's not being built even though they're advertising it. So this is the other side of the hill. You can kind of see beyond the sign. So behind this sign is just empty because supposedly they're developing this beautiful looking thing. Uh, but so I wanna point out that this says departmentos. So if you speak Spanish from Spain or Nicaragua or most places, that means department, like a state or a department of anything, a department store would still be department. And in Nicaragua, our departmentos include Granada, Leon, Managua, Rivas, Hinotepe, I'm sorry, Hinotega. Uh, all of those are departmentos. And when you live in a rental unit, it is an apartmento, basically the English word apartment, but in Spanish. And that is the same in Spain. It's the same in most countries. But here in Mexico, they use department to mean apartment in English, which is extremely confusing because it doesn't line up with the English that we use, but also it doesn't line up with the Spanish from the rest of the Spanish-speaking world either. And so that becomes super, super confusing. Now, I'm going to put up the camera as high as I can because we got some really cool views out there. I'm going to see if I can get them. But we've got more open ocean and mountains and stuff over there beyond this part of the city. And uh, there's, there's like an inlet. So we're actually on a peninsula here in, in Centro, and uh, I don't know how much you're gonna get to see, but I'm gonna put the camera up high and see if we can get anything. All right, I took a minute to cool off under a beautiful tree here. You can see some boats out there on the kind of west, southwest side of the island. I'm gonna turn slowly so you can get the bearings. We have, this is where the road splits. Those are the high buildings, that's the construction pit. This is this beautiful tree with this gorgeous view out behind it. And then this is, Calle Bateria, you can see that going way down the hill. This is a very steep part here. And we're gonna take just a moment while I'm standing here under this tree. I'm gonna start moving forward, but there's nothing to see for a little bit. So we're gonna take this opportunity to bring up a map at Bateria so you can see where we are. Hopefully I remember to do this when editing the video. <laughs> And this part gets a little bit tight up here because they want to build as many buildings as they can up here with the breeze and the view. But you can see the Gold Coast directly in front of us. Now I wish I had a telephoto because 
we could get some amazing views. On the GoPro, it seems so far away. Standing here is a little bit better. And if I had a telephoto, this would be an amazing shot. Really, really cool. This house on the left has to be absolutely amazing. What a cool spot. Oh, doors are open. We can see in this place. There's a puppy. What is this? One of the things that makes speaking Spanish hard on this show is that I'm talking to you guys in English. So I'm in English brain. And if you're a completely fluent bilingual person like Valentina, and Maggie, they're able to go back and forth fluidly. They don't have to stop and think about it. They just speak in one or the other. But as a new and not very accomplished Spanish speaker, speaking in English and then suddenly speaking in Spanish or vice versa, makes it very difficult to make the transition. So as I'm walking down the street, it's like I'm speaking in English and people hear me in English typically as they're approaching. And, uh, then trying to speak in Spanish, obviously saying buenos dias is not what I mean, but to actually then converse with someone really quickly, you have to stop and let your brain go back to Spanish and uh, think about what you want to say. And it's just, as it is, Spanish is hard when you're a new speaker. And uh, especially when you've learned as an adult, for any of you who are adults with children or any of you who are children, Highly recommend, can't recommend enough, learn a foreign language, especially Spanish, obviously, but uh, any language that, that may be useful to you that you want to have for your future life. Learn it young. It will make such a difference for you. Okay, these people want to back up. I don't know what's going on. Oh, I can see why if you turn down this road, you might regret it and come back. That is very much, very narrow, very steep streets. That is stuff that we would expect again in Greece and Spain. Those are things. Now we did find that one road that one time in Didiamba in Nicaragua, uh, but it's very unusual to not have big open wide roads in Nicaragua. Normally you can drive almost everywhere and it's, it's much like the U.S. It's just lots of space. The colonial cities get tight, uh, but only a little bit tight. Like they're not like hard to navigate from a, oh, it's so tight of a turn that I'm not sure the car is going to make it around. I have to go around really slowly. We don't ever get that. Uh, but here in Mexico, like the Mediterranean in Europe, there's a lot of places where because you're building on hillsides and you're constrained by the, the land formation very heavily, you end up in spots where you can be physically challenged to navigate your car around wherever you're going. Uh, and uh, in some ways I hate that. And in some ways it's so charming and unavoidable in the, in the most beautiful kinds of landscape that you just end up with it in places where you want to be. One of these. All right, now we're coming around the corner. We're at the Colegio Pacifico, the Pacific High School, which is a really old rundown building. I really hope this is not actively in use as a high school. And it has a sign that said University of Mazatlan, but it's been wiped away. And now it just says Colegio El Pacifico, college of the, or college here, like in Nicaragua means high school. So high school of the Pacific. But they do have a cool steps to go up and give you a view. So we're not going to pass that up. Oh, great breeze up here too. You can just see the Gold Coast through the trees. And there is the Malecon. We started in the middle of that and walked all the way up here. So we're heading around that hill down there. And you can just see a little bit of this beautiful, beautiful it's behind this wall on the right, but here in front, if you stand up here, you can see the lawns of this place up here. So this is funny, as I, as I went to leave, 
I turned off the camera and I started going down the steps and someone actually poked their head out of the high school of the Pacific and said something, but not to me, but it was really funny because it really feels abandoned. And someone was right behind the, the security door behind me. It was all padlocked and stuff. So they weren't about to open it. And they stuck their face out and said something. It was really weird. What a gorgeous walk this is. This is incredible. Sadly, those Pomonia are not electric. They're gas powered and incredibly loud, which is super unfortunate. They're a very touristy thing, and I appreciate the tourist stuff, but like in Cochabamba, where they, in Bolivia, where they use really old, incredibly unsafe 1950s, maybe early 1960s Dodge mini school buses. They're awful. They were not great in the 1950s and now they're poorly maintained and just old and they they use them and they keep them under the guise of tourism but they're just dangerous and they're they're kind of neat to look at but they gas guzzle and make outrageous noise and they're very very unsafe. And these pulmonia, while not nearly as bad by any stretch whatsoever, they're goofy and I understand that supposedly there's some classic thing here but they're super goofy and they're way too loud. And uh, I think they actually qualify as kind of an eyesore because they're not attractive. And having something goofy in what should be a romantic sea setting, uh, I think really detracts. And if they were just attractive electric golf carts, that were silent and safer and newer and more efficient and quiet, like, Oh, that would be great. Be fantastic. I love that stuff. But as it is, I think they're kind of a negative. And I think keeping them as quote unquote, quote unquote, a tourism thing uh, is very foolish. Some beautiful places along here. This is a boutique hotel and restaurant right there. This, I imagine, is apartments. There's another one. They're not terrible, but they're such a weird design and just loud. That's the best Western in front of us that we came by earlier. We're getting a good walk in. My watch says we're up to about one and a quarter miles. So nothing crazy. But it's a bit hilly. So hopefully you can see it. On the camera, I'm not going to try to cross the square. The, the sidewalks are very high here to discourage people stepping off. Let me just get a little bit of a, so you can see what it looks like here. And this circle with this big, beautiful tile work. Love that. It says Mazatlan Mazatl. Mazatl? Very hard to. So Mazatlan, uh, if you're looking at the picture, that is a deer saying something in the middle. I have no idea what the deer is saying. Or maybe the deer is smoking something, but I think it's trying to, it's, I think those are like thought bubbles. But Mazatlan is Nahuatl for, so that's Mazatl, I guess. My brain had to go into Nahuatl for a second. Nahuatl uh, for place of the deer. So this was a place heavily populated by deer when they first set up the village here. And then this side, there's something on the third side. I don't know what it is. My guess is that it says Mexico. On this side, it's Sinaloa, established 1831. Mazatlan was the capital of Sinaloa during the 1800s. Not all of them, during the early 1800s. Uh, but the capital moved quite some time ago. Partially because this is a tourist town and doesn't make sense to be a capital. That Best Western is very cool, especially this light. And get a little bit of a beach view here so you can just see. I am really surprised by how few people are out on the beach. Even last night when it was really busy. Now it's sunset. 
it filled up really quickly, but it was right at sunset. And after the sun went down, it emptied right out. So it did not last at all. If anything, there are far more people on the seawall than there are on the beach. Do not know what this is. It is morning. You don't tend to go on the beach first thing in the morning, I guess. There are at least 50% as many dogs as there are people out there, which is fantastic. But you'll notice at least along here, the restaurants are packed. Look at that. Hopefully you can see it. It may be blown out on the camera, I can't tell. But that restaurant, La Fonda, is full. And their Pacifico sign has fallen down. And the Looney Bean is full. Now, wingman, few people, not full. I thought that was a like a sheer drop off and he walked off the ah, there's steps for a moment i thought that guy was committing beach suicide he just stepped off the seawall all right uh, so for those who don't know if you're if you're on my channel and you're unfamiliar with mexico which is not very many of you but for those of you who are especially looking for places to move and finding us early on and find a lot of Nicaraguan content, you may not be aware that here in Mexico, OXO is basically their 7-Eleven. They're absolutely everywhere as just something you have to know. But that's where you get all your like you just need a soda or snacks or super basic things. They don't have very much, I got to say, but they do have stuff. So Rico's also completely full this morning. I've seen a number of these pickup trucks with everybody in the back. Like they're red, they're very specific. It's not, it's not a general statement like, oh, there's a lot of people with pickups with people in the back. That's something that we have happen in Nicaragua. And it happens in Mexico too, don't get me wrong. But very specifically, there are these red ones here in Mazatlan that seem to be some specific service for getting around, but I know nothing about it. Even out here on the Valley Cone, there are not very many people. You'd think there'd be more people out exercising, getting walks. I'm the only person I've seen with a camera. I've seen a lot of people with their phones just grabbing some quick pictures, of course. But where's all the... Where are the vloggers? Where are the, the professional photographers with real cameras? Like, none of that. We were in Disney World not long ago. And I was seeing Sony A-Series professional cameras, Canons. Of course, the, there's another one of those red pickup trucks. See what I mean? They're very specific. They have a their specific look of the pickup truck, specific roof thing. There's a symbol on the side, but I don't know if I can read it fast enough. I think that may be a form of public transportation, actually. That looked like a government symbol. So if you look back here, you can see the cathedral steeples kind of... Well, kind of straight ahead, I guess. Uh, so this is one of the, we're in the streets going to the old town. If you see this, this is the um, Sinaloa uh, detention facility. So this is the co the courts and the defendants buildings. There's another one of those trucks. Uh, and that's, that's, this is where all the, the, I guess, federal court of Sinaloa is held. And behind it is the prison.
and there goes an empty one. I'm glad a whole bunch of those came by at once so you don't think I'm crazy. More hotels along here, of course. And then this hill is loaded with cool restaurants and apartments and hotels and stuff and all the radio towers of town apparently. But it's got some really cool looking stuff to it. I do not want to climb up there. Well, I mean, I kind of do, but I'm not going to. And there's, oh, I didn't notice this yesterday. There's a statue of a deer, the symbol of Mazatlan. And then there's this street, which I don't know if it goes through, and it has like these weird cars and stuff and a phone booth. It's very, very odd. Oh, and you can pose as one of the Beatles. It's, yeah, weird. Not sure why that's a thing to do here, but okay. We're just about up to a perfect mirror door to turn around and show you where we've walked from before we go around the point. The architecture over here is fantastic. Stained glass, mosaic tile roof, dome, I guess, multiple domes open areas out to the sea, multiple restaurants in that building. The paint on the stairs is great. Like all around, this place is really cool. And then all along this waterfront here are bars and restaurants. We're gonna get to them in a minute. Some houses and hotels at the top of the hill. But first, over to the Mirador, see where we are. This used to be a swimming pool down here with a slide. This must have been a public pool from the best that I can tell, but it took some damage and uh, seems to be useless now. <laughs> but check out the rocks and just behind the slide, that's where we came from. So you can see the South Island down there that we were looking at and you can see where, so the big building, I'm gonna bring up my screen. I'm gonna do my best to point to this. There's the island where we were. And then right about here is the Colegio Pacifico. So that's where I stopped and took a break. And then you can see the, the buildings up, up here. <laughs> it's hard to see where I'm pointing. Uh, is where we, we stopped under the tree at Bateria and brought up the map. That's where we were. And then I walked down to the Colegio Pacifico. And then I walked all along here to get us to this hill that we saw in all the views from down there. So we're going to take just a quick break here for me to cool down, for the camera to cool down. More importantly, I can just keep going and sweat or something. And it's really pleasant out here. It's just I'm doing a lot of hill walking and talking, which makes me a little bit warm. The breeze is amazing. And uh, oh, here's a nice walkway to go down to where they were. I didn't realize and this is where it was. And we're going to continue on down along this coast. All right, let's keep this going. So uh, in the, we were out here in the afternoon yesterday and all these bars were packed. Not really so much a breakfast spot. But these are all very beachfront bar kind of places, great views. You can see they're just looking out into the open ocean. Oh, straight out. Hopefully you can see it. There's a container ship out there. It's blue though, so it really matches. You can just see the white on its, on its aft. Yeah, most of these places, they, they're even closed. These are not next to the hotels, so you can kind of imagine they're not popular for breakfast, but I'm surprised 
if you offered breakfast out here, the places right on the Malikon are packed. Like there's got to be more desire for breakfast than can be supplied. This place is really cute. So this is Sinaloese. A Sinaloense, uh, food of Sinaloa, traditional Sinaloa food. Yeah, every single one of these is currently closed. And that is not thrifty car rental, that is thrifty ice cream, which threw me off yesterday. Let's see. First of all, cool statue. A lot of statues along here. The houses or maybe boutique uh, hotels up on top of the rock are really cool. Got some people fishing out here. Javier will be happy to see that fishing is a thing here. There you can see the ice cream place. And obviously the owners live right above it. A very cool spot. I'm not exactly sure why they put a circular bench that block you off from the rest of the little park, but uh, okay. must be the statue of the siren or something. No, I don't know. Let's see. Oh, just the Mazatlanian woman. La mujer Mazatleteca. Mazatleca. That's hard to say. Mazatlan is a hard Nahuatl word to add into other prefixes and postfixes. As we come around the corner here, we start to get really clear views of the Gold Coast. So we are walking north. And over on the right, this is going to come into much clearer view, is La Cueva del Diablo. Or El Diablo, I guess. It's the Devil's Cave. And there's even a bridge up there. We don't know what that goes to or from. Hopefully you can see it in the shadows. But deep in the shadows, there is a red barrier. It's a, it's a dead bolted door, as you're supposed to do with real caves. It's the Cave of the Devil, La Cueva del Diablo. It has a devil head on it, and uh, people go up there and take pictures. But in theory, somewhere you can get a key and go caving. I don't know anything about it. I saw it on maps. As we head north, the city gets newer. This really gives you a taste of what the Gold Coast is gonna look like up there. But first, we have this to climb. All right, I couldn't really record at the top of the stairs. There's just a lot of people and it had been weird, but what great views we were able to get. Now we're gonna continue on northbound. So this giant rock makes getting around in the middle of town a little bit hard as you get out towards the coast. Oh, compromiso. And we got these really cool islands out at sea, Venado in the south, and don't know the others. Yes, sir. 
Gracias. Adiós. I got another statue out there. So much construction going on along the Gold Coast. As you can tell really quickly, hopefully the GoPro really shows it. It's so far out there. But even here on the north side of the old town, most everything is decently old. Not old, old, but there's a quite a bit of older stuff even out on the water, even in the ritzier places. But when you're looking north to the Gold Coast, it is one of these. It is very much brand new construction. All of that's within the last just 10 years. And there's so much of it. Like that's absolutely crazy. But I don't know what the draw would be other than the sheer availability of property to be up there versus down here in the classic old town with all the stuff. I'm sure there's lots of really nice stuff up there. Looking forward to checking it out, but it just doesn't seem to have the attractiveness of this part of Mazatlan. Maybe it's just a lot cheaper, but that's not what I've heard. But there's so much of it. Have another statue here. And of course, people taking pictures. This is the odd statue of the naked couple with all the dolphins trying to get away from them. I don't know why they're naked but it does explain the dolphin's reaction. We're already out to a point where we get to see new construction going on. Oddly, this telecommunications building has been abandoned. It's in such prime real estate though, I can't figure out why someone doesn't snap that up and do something with it. And this house as well, it's in terrible disrepair over on the right, but it's such prime real estate. All right, we're getting some wind, but I guess the thing about the Gold Coast is that it's all sand up there. All of the cool stuff down here was built on the rocks. But the Gold Coast is on, you can see it from here, so much sand. This is nice. All along this walkway, I don't know if you're paying attention, but you can see there's actually benches every other segment. There's at least like eight or nine high rises that we can see from here. You can noticeably see are under construction. You got the two right here, 
one just beyond. You can see the, the, the cranes on top. Then a little space, there's like a hill. And then there's one that's just starting to go up. Crane on top. One that's most of the way finished, crane on top. Crane on one, two left of that. Another five or so left of that. There's another crane. Like it's, it's all over. The growth out here is crazy. All right, we're gonna take a quick break for the camera out here. All right, let's continue on this walk. So I wanna point this out over here. This says, este terreno no está en venta. Evite ser sorprendido. So this land is not on offer, it's not for sale. Avoid being surprised. But I love that the Spanish word for avoid is to evade, evite. And so evade being surprised. It's pretty funny. Uh, I have no idea why you would be surprised. Um, I guess they just don't want to waste their time telling you it's not for sale, but it's not. Now this land supposedly is right next to it. What are this? Now we have this cool little park. Notice how much more modern we're already looking and feeling as we kind of cross around the mountain. And then we've got this cool Mardi Gras thing going on. I'm sure it's Mardi Gras. Yes, I can see it. Carnival. A couple statues like this around town. We have almost killed our first battery of the day. How cool is that? Now this building probably has a bit of wear. Remember, there's a lot of salt spray here. Oh, look how big this park is. Oh, and all those umbrellas up there. Oh, this is really nice. This first floor is beautiful. Look at this. The stonework tile corner that looks like wood-ish and the attractive metal mesh. I think that's a parking garage actually, but what a great job they've done with making that look fantastic. And then this place has a great opportunity for investment for you. Ooh, in the shade, it's nice and cool. Coming from Nicaragua, it is so much cooler in Mazatlan. Ten to twenty degrees Fahrenheit cooler. These are gonna be some cool buildings when they're done. A lot of potential here. If the camera's bouncy, I'm trying to walk a little bit faster so we can see a bit more. I'll show a little bit of the gorgeous rocks of the water here. Notice how wide the roads are here, both the boulevard I'm walking on, but also the access roads. All right, somewhere along this stretch, the camera ran out of battery and failed to alert me. So I don't know how much we missed uh, of the walk. I had 10% when I left the last point that I turned it on, so it should have gone much longer than it did, but it did not. So unfortunately, I'm picking up without really knowing where we were. This is the brand new Museum of Maritime that is just going in, so there's gonna be more stuff to do here in Mazalan. That's gonna be very cool. We had some beautiful views up there, but we are basically just showing off the walk and lots of new structures. And we're back at 100% on battery number two, and we're heading north again. And look at these beautiful sandy beaches. We're finally at the sand. There was some sand on the Malacone, but this is a lot more. You 
You can hear construction noises going on around here. Well, I'll just show, you can see stairs going up to little apartments. That might be a house. That might be like a really fancy house right there. Cut the camera there just for a minute. There was playing loud music that probably would have gotten us edited. So figured best to mark it. What are these? More construction here, right on the water. All right, the University of Sinaloa is going in here. Very cool. The Autonomous University of Sinaloa Faculty of Science. Most likely, I'm guessing, this is maritime studies kind of stuff. We have something very similar in Las Benitas, but obviously completely different scale. From what I can tell, this region is known as Paseo Clausen. No, it's a very German name. What is this? All right, so that's the university you can see there on the left. Some small boats. You really can see the Gold Coast from here. I think technically this is the Gold Coast. And there you can see the sandy beach just stretch out. Here's the Sweets Lincoln, and if their slogan isn't, you can sleep like a log here, then they've really not got a good marketing person. Unfortunately, as much as I really want to walk all of that, I have to get back to my hotel and check out. I have burned up my entire morning. I've been out here for over two hours. Obviously a bit of it, I wasn't filming. I'm just gonna show up this street here. It looks like a church at the top of the street, but you never know here, it could just be apartments. Let's see more. More restaurants and stuff along here, hotels, apartments. This is a beautiful beach. And uh, I do have to make it back. I have to get back, check out, shower, pack. And we are off to the airport to get more people. We're heading to more parts of Mazatlan. Thank you so much for joining me today. This is exciting doing our first like serious Mexico show. I know we did one about getting to Mexico the other day, but that's, well, we showed a little bit, you know, but it wasn't like a Mexico episode per se. There you can really see the, oh, that's the university out there. So there's new university buildings, but there's a whole bunch that's already out there too. Some older stuff. Cool. Look at all the fishing boats. One of these. Starting to get a little bit warm from how hard I'm walking. What are we selling? Oh, those are fresh clams. Everyone is hanging out of the sunroofs. Oh, and here's an army of transportation. Look at this.
my mother would appreciate all the accordion music everywhere. Oh, old spot to sit and play checkers. It's a lot of boats. I guess there's a lot of water out there. All right, we're not gonna be able to do any more of the Gold Coast. We gotta turn around, but thank you so much for joining me. It is so awesome every time doing these videos for you. So glad we were able to come out and do this and see so much of Mazatlan. Oh, we can see another church that way. That's pretty cool. We have seen so much of the Malecon and some of the old town here in Mazatlan. It has been fantastic. As always, if you'd like to support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. It helps especially on things like this. Making trips up to Mexico is, is not terrible, but it's, you know, it's not free and we got to stay up here and it takes a lot of work to do this. And I really appreciate all the support that I get from you guys. You guys make this possible. And uh, of course, share on social media, tell friends. At the end, watch another episode that makes so much of a difference. I'm going to turn around because the noise is, is pretty bad. And uh, just thanks for joining me. Glad you guys were able to come on this walk. Leave your comments below. Ask your questions below. And uh, I will see all of you tomorrow. And right up on the screen, we got four more episodes. If you would just click on one, watch that. That tells YouTube that you love this show and you want to see more of it. And uh, that's what makes all the difference. That's what tells the algorithm we're the thing to show.